And next up, we have a pretty big post pack here from uh, Stefan Keybooms. <laughs> Jeez, if, why can't everyone just be called Bruce? Anyway, <laughs> for those who know your Monty Python, um, he's from uh, Poway in uh, California, USA. So thank you very much. All it says is really old electronics. Oh, we love really old electronics. Can you smell it through the pack? Nah, anyway. Woo! What is that? Oh! Wow! Memory board! <sighs> yes, it's a memory module, a whopping 400 words slash bytes of memory. It's a ferrite core memory, presumably for a Siemens mainframe, manufactured in 1970 and was still in diapers at the time. Wow, thank you very much, Stefan. Let's take a look. Wow, that is fascinating. A big plastic enclosure like that with a uh, couple of dual row, uh, uh, you know, backplane connector to plug into the system. I'm surprised it doesn't have like a handle on the thing actually to move it in and out. And it's double sided. Yes. Oh, look at the density. Uh, presumably 200 words per side. So 100 words, 200 words, 300 words and 400 words ferrite core memory. And yes, there it is. Look, 30th of the 8th. 1970. Goodness. Now, if you don't know how these uh, magnetic core or uh, ferrite core memories um, actually work, I'll get the macro lens out and try and get a real close up on uh, these. I'll link in the Wikipedia down the page um, down below. It's quite uh, comprehensive, so I won't go through a huge amount of uh, detail on it, but uh, suffice it to say that each there's a little ferrite ring on each one of those bits and each ferrite ring is wound it's all wound woven through with all these wires and they can store an individual bit a one or a zero in each one of those little ferrites in there so there's like <laughs> thousands of ferrites in this thing fantastic all woven with the wires as we'll see when we get the macro lens close up but the thing about these is that uh, when you read out the data, you would actually destroy the data. Go figure, it's actually destructive memory. Unbelievable. Anyway, let's take a close-up look at the little ferrite rings in there. And there we go. Check that out. You can see these tiny little ferrite cores and all woven in this intricate matrix. I would love to see a video of them assembling these. I think there is an old video like as part of, uh, you know, one of the NASA, um, you know, the Apollo computers or something wind in these memories and the elaborate machines that actually do it. And uh, oh, I'll have to dig that one out. Somebody will link it in, no doubt. But there you go. Each one of those little ferrite rings can store one bit of information. And if you read out the data, you destroy it. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I think that's a 4x4 four four arrangement in a coincident weave, as a coincident weave current arrangement, as they call it, or something like that. And to store each bit, they uh, put a little pulse through, and uh, you can magnetize each individual uh, ferrite bit. Awesome. And there'd basically be an XY grid on this thing, uh, as you'd expect, and also a uh, third sense line and an inhibit line as well. Um, and you would uh, put a pulse on the uh, XY lines and you would either get or not get a uh, value out of the uh, sense line, depending on whether it was a 1 or a 0. But as I said, actually putting that pulse in was actually could actually be destructive to the bit itself. And I bet you it's next to impossible to get data on what that these uh, devices are for the rows and columns. Oh, not a chance. And just look at the crusty flux residue on this. You would think that this thing's been reworked or something, but no, that's the factory soldering. Oh, goodness. All right, I'm on my Tagano microscope here, so let's have a look at this puppy. We can zoom in on this and... Uh, get a pretty good look at this ferrite core memory. Look at that. That's as close as I can get. But there you go, you can see that there's uh, four wires traveling through each one. So these are all enamel coated uh, wires of course and the green one there is going to be the sense wire and uh, 
you see how they just all loop through and wound around and yeah it's all a bit how you're doing but uh, it's quite an effort to get these through because these are absolutely tiny these things and um, so green one is your sense wire and then uh, then you've got your X and your Y wire running through and then the fourth one is going to be your inhibit line so there you go that is a nice little close-up of some magnetic core memory love it and we'll can zoom right back out on that and and see how they're just all wired through in that arrangement so geez just imagine doing that they've got to have some sort of automated way to do it and then of course then you've got these lines actually going through I can touch those look at that Ta -da! and uh, that is just beautiful thing of beauty it really is and that is a hundred uh, words of memory I think however big a word there is I don't know somebody want to count it go for it and just as a very quick comparison between old and new look at this 1970 magnetic core memory technology we're looking at about you know about a hundred bits stored in that in those magnetic ferrite rings there's about a hundred of them fitting the same space as a modern micro SD card look at that this one's only a paltry two gigabytes um, card but we're talking a hun just even if it's two gigabytes we're talking hundred and sixty million times the amount of information unbelievable so basically what you'd have is just your X and your Y drivers here and a sense line going through there and then you would apply a uh, current pulse to whichever location you actually wanted to on this thing and then you could uh, sense the data back on the sense line and you could set or reset a one or a zero in each one of those little uh, ferrite rings absolutely fascinating and uh, uh, the access uh, speed or something like this around about a microsecond or something like that so basically one megahertz uh, RAM we're looking at here probably maybe a bit slower maybe a bit faster we're not sure so thank you very much Stefan I've always actually wanted one of these for the lab I should like frame it or something like that because it is fantastic but before I do that um, I will probably uh, if I get time do a video on this actually powering up this and actually writing data to it and see well it should still work it's just a bit of ferrite and some wires um, you know I have no idea about these driver chips over here but we can easily just tap in I mean easily just wire in and bypass those and we probably should be able to store some data in here um, so if you've got any good ideas for uh, doing that please leave it in the comments